Hey everybody, welcome to one in a series of videos about the Zenobia Award. Now what is the Zenobia Award? Well, I'll have some links in the description below the video, but the Zenobia Award is a design award put together by various folks across the board game industry, and it's targeted towards marginalized designers and also topics for games. So all of these games that I'm gonna be showing you on these videos are from different historical contexts and different time periods. Now at the time of recording this video, the Zenobia Award has just announced and narrowed down their selection of finalists. And I saw this announcement and I looked at some of the games that they had announced and a lot of them look really, really interesting to me. So I reached out to uh, the folks at the Zenobia Award and they put me in touch with the designers of all of the finalists. And I've had a chance over the last several weeks to demo some games, do some interviews, do some play testing. And so I'm gonna bring you uh, some showcase of some of those finalists. Now, this stuff, if you're watching this in the future, the game may have changed. If the game eventually gets published, I'm sure it'll look a lot different. All of these videos are gonna be showcasing the game on Tabletop Simulator. So again, it, things might have changed and there may or may not be links to the Tabletop Simulator mod directly. That may change in the future as the designers you know, feel differently about maybe showcasing the game in its various different states. So the game we're gonna talk about now is Liberation Haiti by the designer Damon Stone. Now you can see here, you will play as enslaved Africans and Maroons, which are escaped slaves, fighting for abolition and equality against the French colonial government, slave owners, militia forces, foreign armies, and even the environment of the island itself. Now what Liberation Haiti is, is a cooperative deck builder, to be really succinct about it, but there's a lot more going on than just that. So let's jump into the tabletop simulator mod and I can kind of show you around a little bit and give you a sense of it. So if we zoom in here, you can see the main board here and this has got some setup that's happened already. And then there's also four player boards. Now you can play this one to four players and depending on the number of players, you will play different factions here. So if I were to play a single player game, you would use the Les Maroons here, but as you add more players, you'll start to add more of these different factions. And if you look at the board up here, you can see these are sort of color coded to the factions. You've got purple, yellow, and green, and you've got the purple, yellow, and green here. Now, the reason you play single player uh, as the Maroons faction here, is you can see it's kind of, kind of gray mountain background there. So you can play in these different areas with the mountains, which covers uh, the entire board. Now, like I said, it is a deck building game, but it's really done in two phases. So you have what's called a planning stage, which is like a really pure, just deck building stage and you'll play through some rounds there as the threat kind of builds up. And then you're gonna switch into the revolution stage, which will still have a little bit of deck building, but it's mostly gonna be de about deploying different units onto the map and taking over some of the different towns and plantations and so on. If we zoom in over here on our player board, you can see there's a nice player aid right on the board. Uh, you've got your planning stage actions, acquiring cards, triggering abilities, raiding the deck. And then you're gonna switch into the revolution where you're gonna start deploying units and cards actually out onto this main board. So if we take a look here, you can see I've got a hand of starting cards, some evasion cards, some rally cards, and so on. Now, the one thing to keep in mind about these cards is see the persuasion card, it's got the little green icon there on the left, where if we go over to the evasion card, it's got the little yellow icon. Well, what you're gonna do is you're gonna want to buy these cards here. You can see here's a one that costs two green, over here this costs two yellows. So I will be starting to discard cards and play these and so here I've got two yellow cards, so now I can afford this card. This card will go into my deck here. And you can see this is a recruit. Uh, so I can start to uh, use these cards later in the acquiring phase, in the, in the planning phase. And these will provide different icons that I can use to buy future cards. Now when you play the cards, you choose which icon that you will use to spend and so on. But then these cards will become more useful and relevant once we get to the revolution stage of the game. Now, as these cards come out, you're gonna to start to see, sometimes they'll have threat that goes along with them. So we can see, for example, this card here has the two threat icons under its costs there. So when these cards are purchased, it's actually going to increase this threat tracker here. And you can see based on the number of players, once the threat tracker, let's say it gets up to 15 in a single player game, that's gonna trigger the revolution stage and it gets up to 20 in a two player game and so on. Now it's also possible for cards to start to get threat cards associated with them as they come out in some of the round phase cleaning up and so on. So once you are done with that phase, and there's just a ton of cards with lots of different special abilities and things like that, 
uh, and different combat strengths. So you can see this fella here, he's got a strength of six, so he's gonna be great to recruit for uh, the next phase. And you can also see I've seeded the board here uh, with these various different tokens. And these are little threat cards in here, and these are who you're gonna be interacting with and doing combat with to try to get through one of the main many victory conditions, which I'll talk about in just a little bit. Now, before we move into the revolution stage, I just wanna show you a couple of the abilities on some of the cards you can actually trigger too. So for example, Rally, you can add one card from your discard pile into your hands. So as you buy cards, you can start to fish those out out of your discard pile and get them back into your hand uh, for purchases later on that turn. Uh, persuasion, to reduce the cost of the next recruit you acquire uh, by two. And then evasion here is you can ignore up to two threat on a card you acquire. So there'll be little abilities and stuff on cards here, even in your starting deck, that's gonna help you kind of manipulate this market row up here to try to build the most efficient deck possible. So let's take a look at some of the types of cards that you can get, that's very important here. So here we can see we have a leader, we've got here a recruit and an ally. Those cards will be put into what's called your unit deck. When you move into the revolution stage, you're gonna create kind of two decks of cards, a unit deck and a material deck. Now you've got other cards here like intelligence, uh, maneuver, those will go into you, your material deck. So you kind of have two decks of cards because you can see here on your player board, you've got your unit deck up here, your supply deck over there, and then you've got different unit rosters. So as you start to pull cards out of your unit decks, you're gonna to start to add these to uh, the different units. And this are gonna be represented on the board with this token here. So as we start off the recruitment or the revolution phase, you're gonna put these out onto the board. And if we take a closer look at the board here, you can see it's divided up into different colored areas by the different factions, but also different sections here. You can see we've got one, two, three, four, five, six in yellow, and the same with the teal color here. Now your units are gonna be moving from plantation to plantation to villages and so on. And you're gonna be moving along this little white road here. And so as you move through these locations, it's possible that you might raise these locations to get a little bonus reward on the other side of this. And these different plantation tokens will actually give you uh, a little bit of a bonus too. So if we look at this one here, this will actually add one to the amount of cards you can draw as also one to your movement. So all the units have a default movement of two, but you do have to stop when you run into an enemy. And you'll be revealing these threat cards kind of as you encounter them, kind of learning uh, in a sense, like what the enemy has also had planned. So this, you kind of see these various locations here and you can kind of see like the bottom right hand corner of the card will point to the location it corresponds to and you'll have to deal with them and so what's going to happen is you're going to gain and lose morale by winning and losing battles trying to co control the board and also basically the morale is what you're really looking at so the main way that you will lose the game is if your morale ever drops to zero then you will have lost the game now it starts at five and if you ever max out your morale at 35, that's one of the three ways that you can win the game. Now, the, one of the other ways you can win the game is actually having military control, having destroyed or controlling 23 or more of these various different uh, locations. Now, the final way to win the game and also to lose the game is you're gonna be going through these event decks. So you can see here is 1791A, B, 1792A and B and so on. So you're gonna be going through these. So let's shuffle these up a little bit and deal some of these out here so you can see. Now, if you ever have to go through this event deck or this whole deck, then you will have lost the game as well. But you also see there are challenges in here. So at different points in the game, you can actually try to meet these different challenges. This one is discard 12 of the green resource from your hand. You may reduce the number by one for each of those resources on a deployed card that you have out in the field, so to speak. And then, so that's a challenge that you can meet. So if you succeed at the eight political challenges, that's another way that you can win the game. So that's a brief overview of Liberation Haiti. And so there's a couple of things that are very interesting about this game. One is the planning stage versus the revolution stage. So you have this sort of pre-game kind of idea where you will be playing either by yourself or with other players, sort of building uh, you know, the decks and trying to sort of plan around it and, and look at what kind of approach you're gonna take. So there's a very much a, a preparation uh, side of the game because again, there's, there's three victory conditions. And so you want to sort of plan for that and sort of watch the amount of threat that the game is trying to throw at you during that 
that planning stage. So you kind of have to watch that and be careful about going for some of those higher value cards because those are gonna trigger some threat, kind of arouse the suspicions of the folks uh, that are currently controlling the island. And then you're gonna kind of leverage that into the revolution stage, which just has a lot of really cool things going on. So you've got the kind of the tactical sort of combat idea. You've got the managing of you know the events and dealing with those, uh, not only just dealing with them in terms of the challenges, but dealing with some of the uh, obstacles that they're gonna throw uh, in your way. So I, I had to talk about it like a little bit glibly. I'd say it kind of reminds me of like Spirit Island, but more of a deck builder. So if you're familiar with Spirit Island, uh, it's a way of trying to keep intruders off of your island. This is a little bit of a different scenario there, but it has that sort of similar vibe where you're trying to uh, push back on these different forces in, in a few different ways in these various different locations. And one interesting uh, mechanic about this is when you go and you start deploying cards to your different unit stacks, if you're playing with more than one player, you can deploy cards to other folks' units. So you can kind of share uh, the wealth a little bit. You, know, you say, oh, you know what? I think this leader would be a little bit better off for you over in this unit because you're going to be dealing with this kind of thing. And I like that it, it is not just, you know, like a straight combat war game. There's a lot of other elements going on uh, that are involved. So it also kind of reminds me of a coin game in that way. So it's kind of like a deck building coin game. Uh, in a lot of different ways. And some of the reactionary stuff that happens in terms of some of the threat cards that come up, you've got to deal with and handle and then try to, you know, kind of replan and reevaluate your strategy there uh, is a really neat thing. So again, of course, this is a prototype. And if this game gets published, it's probably going to look a lot different than it does now. You know, who knows? It might look pretty close to what it looks like now. Um, but I think if you're like a fan of a war game, a fan of deck building, a fan of coin games and this kind of thing, I think you really get a kick out of playing Liberation Haiti. So if the Tabletop Simulator mod link is down below, uh, then please take a look at it. If not, you know, try to look out it for it in the future. And uh, hopefully we see this game uh, see the light of day because it's a very interesting topic. And it's got some really cool mechanics that really tickle my gamer brain. And so I think Dame has done a really fantastic job with this. And hopefully it gets some more development and stuff like that in the future. And, and I think it has a bright future. So anyway, that's Liberation Haiti. Definitely t look into it. Thank you.